chaps, I'm just going to do a backdate on some footage that we caught in April, May, and sometime then. The engine building the Pinto for Kate. Uh, my 69 Capri there in the background. Um, mucking around and uh, I just thought that it'd be nice to put these out there because some of you building one of these old Ford four-cylinder engines might find it... Uh, somehow helpful or useful or entertaining and uh, just to let you know the engine is all up and running now and it sounds good but we won't know until we put it in the car and uh, test it for real but we still got quite a lot of work to do on the car before we can put the engine in so um, we're gonna have to wait anyway hope you enjoy what are you doing dude I've just put some food coloring in this uh container with a bit of water and a bit of soap. I'm going to try and measure the combustion chamber volume. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this bad boy up. How to modify Ford engine. I'm going to give it a hundred. A hundred cc's. Mm -hmm. Get the little pieces of paper out and see what's, what volume of the chamber was that we calculated. Combustion chamber 48.4 cc. And we said we we're probably going to need around 40 cc because we've got exactly 100 cc's of liquid in here. Okay. And we've put some um, grease in the valves to see the seat so it doesn't leak. Put the spark plug in and we put this perspex jobby with a bit of grease. And we want to see how much of this we can put in there. Do you know what the problem is though? I've got. The hole needs to be at the highest point. But I can see at the minute. Basically, we need to tip that a little bit over. Can you hold that upright one moment? Yeah. That's better. That's good. about it there about 57 cc's hold it, hold it 56.123 no it's 56 57 and a half way oh, so it's right, about okay. 57 cc that doesn't sound right does it so we measured 48 there and now it's 57 bloody hell something ain't right is it do, do you want to have a visual look on the combustion chamber of that head there? Yeah. And just see if it looks tremendously... Cause, okay, we've got the valves. These are different valves, but that's it. Why would the CC be so much bigger? Well, it is. Maybe because the valves are scooped? Very likely. CC. Yeah, 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 very likely. I think that could be it, dude. Because the other ones weren't. Can you bring that head up, please? So we've got Are there any valves in there? No. So we've got 50... It's not 57 quite. Uh, two, four, six. I can't it's 56.6. Okay, so we can see now that this has got a lot more meeting left in there than this has got left in it. Okay, so... The, Plus yeah. the valves are scooped to give yeah, extra... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's bad, dude. That's bad because that means we're going to have to skim a hell of a lot off this head to get the compression ratio of 11 to 1. Okay, so we need to get a new piece of paper and start writing these down. So it's 56.6 cc. It's a good thing we measured. So we've got a bit of a problem, guys. I've put some dummy valve springs here, and we've got our new valves. 
that's an exhaust valve sorry that's an inlet valve that's an exhaust valve got a problem uh, we've used single collet valves um, yeah single collet exhaust valve with single collet cotters cotter pins and the problem we're getting is that the cotters are not fitting in properly we bought these from Burton Power that the the valve and the the cotters the retaining things and I don't think that looks right that gap there shouldn't be there it's not a case of lack of fitment it doesn't matter what the caps doing these things won't close on the valve as you can see that's the original and that's how it's supposed to look so I've wrote to Burton Power and uh, hopefully they'll offer to send us another pair of these another set of these cotters to get this right because it ain't right for the cam. Yeah, we need the key. We've got the old cam somewhere. Yeah. It should yeah. be one of the boxes. Yeah. So, man, let's put the Woodruff key in. Yeah, that's the the Piper cam. Yeah, that's the new Piper High cam. High performance. Oof. And that's the standard cam. Yeah. I'm holding them next to each other and I'm looking at the phasing uh, and the lift as well and the duration. So you can't really tell by eye much of the, the phasing. The, the, the difference in lift is, looks quite substantial, obviously. Again, anyway, it's good. Yeah. Stick that in, dude. Does anything need to go on to that? I don't think so, man. I think it's a one-piece uh, one piece thing. Can you turn each other wood keys at the top yeah. so I can see? There we go. So basically, this should just slide on. going in very smooth <laughs> oh yeah see if this is going to sit in a bit deeper oh yeah okay they're good that's it this is only uh, uh what you call it um yeah whatever uh it's it's the degreeing number is set to zero and um, I think we're going to leave it like that and maybe when we're at the rolling road with Chris we might carefully try a few um, degrees advanced and a few degrees of retarded if it likes it more I've got these uh, dummy springs on now um, and I want to see what we're going to do with regards to valve and piston clearance and also to see how much we need to skim off the head to get the desired compression ratio of 11 to 1. Right, we've mock assembled the, the cylinder head uh, with dummy springs. These are very light springs. Gav, you're such a twat, man. So the valves are very light and easy to, you can do it by hand, basically. I put some, um, also what I haven't done is set the, um, I need to set the clearances a bit more so they're a bit more realistic mm. right okay so what we've done is guys we've just briefly put the head on the block and we found that the exhaust valves are too close to the piston um, so we want to check that the geometry is uh, sort of right so Gav can you keep an eye on the gauge yep How much is it reading? 1,152 millimeters. So that's 11.52. That's 12. What did it? What did it say it was? On the uh, on the Piper manual. BP 300. 1257. And we've got 11.52, but I think we've reached the. We need to reset it. Zero. That? 11.69. Uh, 
Okay. Oh, that's the freaking exhaust, isn't it? Yeah, that's exhaust lift. BP three hundred twelve fifty seven is valve lift, and we're getting eleven eleven sixty nine. So okay. So that suggests we're not even getting full lift. That's what it and suggests. And that's still too much. But we are a bit of an angle, but then so is the valve. <sighs> Tell you what. Though. Yeah, that's pretty much uh, Alright chaps, what I'm doing now is uh, I went on to Turbo Sport Forum and some guys had some good ideas there because we've got soft uh, dummy valve springs we can push uh, by hand to see where the, pist the, the valve is touching the piston, how far we need to go. So for that one, for example, we've got the piston towards the top uh, because this uh, exhaust valve is open. So what I want to do is put the engine on top dead center for number one cylinder, which is the firing stroke. It's just past it now, so let's do that again. See what happens. Right, so this should be exhaust uh, being on top dead. So the pistons at the top, number one, the pistons at the top, exhaust valve is, uh, is it fully open? No, it's not fully open. But, geez, as you can see, there is no room. I mean, there's like one, one mil there. Do you see that? Um, Let's see if we can replicate this for number four. Oh, I just want to make sure that everything's working as it should be. So if I do another rotation of the crank and bring it up to the TDC mark. Chaps, basically we were assembling an engine and we thought that our pistons and valves were meeting uh, together, which is obviously bad because if they do that when the engine starts, it's going to bend the valves and your engine is going to be destroyed. Basically what you're watching is us thinking in error that we would need to do valve cutouts um, on the pistons um, to allow for this sort of interference engine but it's all rubbish, it's all bollocks. Uh, I'll let you guys watch it but just bear in mind if you do buy a BP300 cam um, you probably won't need any valve cutouts. Uh, the reason that uh, uh, this we were having problems with it is because I timed this aftermarket cam kit using Ford's specification. Now, don't take this for gospel, guys, because I'm just trying stuff out. We still don't know the result of this engine. It runs and it runs nice on the floor. We don't know what it does in a car. So, uh, you don't want to use your Ford markings, the crank and the cam pulley markings when you're putting an aftermarket cam kit like this because you could bend the valves and all sorts of things. You need to forget what Ford says to you and use Piper's specifications of how to set your cam timing. Okay, Static cam timing I think it's called. And this isn't very easy because you do need, possibly need a, uh, a dial gauge indicator as you just watched us previously. All right. So we were basically thinking that we had a big job to do in the engine to create valve cutouts and I was looking for solutions for that. So, but thankfully when I realized that I, I was using the wrong technique, uh, we didn't do anything. We just corrected the timing of the cam and it's all fine now. When it runs this cam, this BP300 rally cam, the engine around idle sounds like a tractor. Yeah? actually sounds like an old freaking Spitfire motor aeroplane yeah but when you start revving it that's when you hear it harmonize and start kicking out power um, what else I wanted to say <clears throat> uh, also you're gonna watch a little later down this video 
I was uh, basically the people that put these valves in for us didn't do a good job, guys. Now they do have a, a, a reasonably good reputation around here. I'm not going to say who it was, but they didn't do a good job. I think it was a Friday evening job, and they forgot to see if the valves actually create a seal on the valve seat, which they aren't. And I, I don't know this yet. This you're watching me doing what I'm doing. I haven't even looked to see the massive gaps between the valves and the valve seats when they're fully seated. So we had to take this to another engine shop to put right. And that's sunk the valves even deeper in the chambers, which is why we're having this huge combustion chamber volume of 57 cc's and why we've got a very low compression engine. So we did cop this engine build up. Um, we were aiming for 11 to 1. And we are at about 8 to 1 now, which is lower than original. So that's why I'm saying I don't really know how this engine is going to perform on the road. But still, you know, we're going to find out. We can skim a bit off the head to raise the compression ratio to maybe 9.5 or something like that. But it's not where I wanted it to be, which is 11 to 1. Because to get that, we need to skim about 2.5 or 3 millimeters off the head. And that would be too, too much meat off it too much material off it and it would weaken it and it would probably warp or break anyway so just bear in mind you're watching us cock up now all right don't don't take it seriously it should catch up a little later on and uh, some of it makes sense but if you've got any questions about Ford Pinto engines if you're a novice a bit like us but you want any help or any advice put a comment down below or email us if you can find our email below and we'll be happy to help all right so keep on watching so that's piston at the top for exhaust valve uh, uh, number four see that's got more play in it for the same why is that happening now do you see what I mean you can hear that I'm gonna carry on doing it I'm gonna go back to cylinder number one exhaust stroke TDC Oh. Okay, it's the same. Oh, man. Tedious, isn't it? It's got to be done now. That still has more play in it. Now, that might be down to the clearance. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Let's try it for another one. I don't know how to find when we're on top dead center on another cylinder other than putting my hand into the spark plug hole. Anyways, don't know if you can understand, guys. Uh, no hair today. <laughs> it fell off. But, uh, yeah, we're having a problem with this. So, what we're going to do is, um, I went on to Turbo Sport Forum yesterday. It was very helpful. And what they said there was that if you put an inlet valve, a sacrificial valve, into your cylinder head, um, sacrificial cylinder head. You can put your drill, I don't know what I'm talking about. What you do guys is you use a valve as a drilling tool to drill the cut out in the, in the piston and crown. So we take the good head off, we bring a sacrificial head here, which we've got. You have installed sacrificial valves in the head, no valve springs or anything like that. Then you, in, you, you connect your drill chuck to the top of the valve stem oh, I forgot the big thing when you've got your valve you grind re basically you, you wreck your valve you grind grooves in it to turn it into a bit of a grinding tool if you like so when that's rotated with a drill it goes that you pull it you push it down and it starts cutting material where it needs to be cut on the aluminium piston so that's what uh, I think Gav and I are going to be doing. So uh, I'm just getting more familiar with this. This we've talked the head down. Uh, we didn't set valve clearances; just did it roughly. And maybe I will set the valve clearances to get a better feel of how much we need to take off the head, off the crown pistons, the cutouts, to create a margin for being able to work the engine because. It will run now with um, the cam fully 
uh, the cam fully advanced. If I advance the cam by several degrees, it misses the crown, but that means that the engine probably won't run as well. Um, basically, still very close to destruction, okay? So we are familiar and we are aware that we are building an engine that is going to be more unreliable, closer to destruction. Um, that sounds quite dramatic, but yeah, if you've got a valve head and a piston occupying the same space, and they're only not knocking into each other by a few thousandths of a second, uh, you need to make that, you know, as reliable as possible because if something goes wrong, they both occupy the same space at the same time and you go back. And we don't want that. So anyway, I'm going to spend another 7,000 hours familiarizing with this in the head and then we'll probably pop it off, bring the old one in and start drilling grooves on the pistons and CCing those and goes on and on and on. But when you hear about good horsepower engines, right? And you think, why, how can these guys do it? It might be that it's because they put in the time in these very simple things, but they can be tedious and difficult. Like the calculations for the compression ratio, just my mind just goes, uh, you know, cabbage. Cause there's all these numbers and figures and trying to understand what you're trying to do so yeah guys i'm having a go at this no idea if i'm doing it right in fact i'm probably confident i've just spoke to piper cams and they explained to me that uh i have to set the cam in a certain way anyway so that's top dead center for cinder number one supposedly but this now is way out of whack, all right? Anyway, so I'm gonna keep turning. We're using this Piper Cams disc here. I'll show it to you. So that's the Piper Cams uh, disc. And uh, I'm just having a go to see if I can, uh, if I can learn how to use it. Okay. You know, it gives you like top dead center, what the valve, that says uh, inlet valve usually fully open at between 110, uh, between 95 and 110 degrees. So let's find that out. So I guess that needs to be um, on the top dead center mark behind this disc and the dial gauge connected onto inlet valve for number one full open so I guess if it's doing that then I'll know it's right because on a normal cam see that little arrow there that needs to be pointing basically vertically uh, down and as you can see it's now pointing that way uh, not installed a performance cam before so I don't know if that's what they're supposed to be doing but that's what I'm finding out now so what I've done is set my dial gauge indicator to zero it's fully compressed I've zeroed it so the valve should start um, opening and it should show there so when it's at full lift which is about 11.4 um, this protractor here or whatever this thing is called should be at top dead center showing somewhere there so let's have a go at that Good freaking luck with that, mate. Oh, we're not even at top dead center, so okay, let's carry on. Let's see what happens. Um, right. Okay, so that's opening. No, it's not. Oh, it's going to be opening any minute now. There she goes, starts opening now. So we're at top dead center. So the piston's at top dead center, right? It's just after top dead center and the inlet valve's starting to open. So inlet valve should be, where are we at now? 7.6 lift and we're approaching, I don't know if you can see that, we're approaching the 
Oop, that's not the right uh, bolt, is it? Okay, 8.5. Nine point seven. Okay, we're in the vicinity now. Ten point six. We're in the right area. Ten point eight six. Inlet valve usually fully open. Well, ours is a bit of a wilder cam and fully open was about a hundred and thirty whatever that means it's not degrees is it so that was top dead center I didn't see what degrees of valve started opening so I'll need to do that again but it opened at about a hundred maximum lift fully open was about a hundred and twenty-five say so I can have a look if the book says anything about that see here's the book the pamphlet and I've uh, marked it upside down I've marked it in green so full lift inlet after top dead center exhaust before so inlet full lift after top dead center 106 degrees 106 degrees after top dead center it would have reached full lift yeah? 106 degrees Where's that then? <clears throat> That's a hundred, a hundred and five, a hundred and six. It should have reached full lift. Uh, I don't think that happened with us, but we weren't too far off. Let's try that again. So, so we we're showing, you know, where was full lift? I'm going to go backward, which is not the best thing to do. <clears throat> Look at that. Okay, 11.32. Lift. Oh, that wasn't good. No, that's not good. So I'm going to leave at 1120. So full lift is at 135. Okay. Full lift, 106 after top dead center. 106. And we're getting 135. Okay, so what does that mean? So we're late, aren't we? We're late, I believe. We're behind. Uh, how the earth, how do you think? So we're behind. Well, I don't know what is behind. The cam is behind. The cam is behind. So the cam needs to come forward a bit. So to do that, to do that, either slacken these screws or take the belt off rotate the cam forward one notch um, let's do that then and then uh, yeah ok so that's one notch I think ok I'm going to go for a revolution just to make sure we're not touching anything gently. Okay, so when I would top dead center the number one okay that's good We're back at zero again sorry you can't see that 
So our TDC, what we want to establish again is full lift, and we're looking for 106 on the on this thing here. So, is the valve opening now? This is definitely not going to work, is it? Why is this not working? Okay, so now it's working. Exhaust valve usually fully open. So inlet valve's opening now. It's full open. 10 11.7, 11.12, 11.9, 11.20, 11.21, 11.25, 11.25. I think we're at 11.31. 1135, 1137, 1138. This is the valve opening, right? So 1138, 1139. I think that's it. So 1139 was the highest the valve opened. And we're at 110, 115, we're about 117 degrees. And we need um, 106. Might be another tooth. We're going close, though, aren't we? We're heading in the right direction. So one more tooth. Belt out. Okay, belt in. Good. Do you know I'm going to tighten that little? Bit? to this because uh, I think this could be catastrophic if you don't do it when the engine is running. Okay, so we've moved one tooth forward. Let's get back to, so now the inlet valve's shutting. Oops, down. Okay, well, that wasn't great, was it? Okay, it is at a bit of an angle, which is why we might be getting issues. So let's zero that. I don't know, should we zero it? Not yet. Okay, let's turn engine slowly because we've moved the camera tooth. Right, so I think we can zero that now. No, not off. Yeah, that's it, zero, okay. So what we said we were gonna do, so now exhaust is opening now. All right, now we're getting rid of our waste gases. And we should put top dead center now. And the TDC mark has bloody moved. Good. <clears throat> Do you know maybe I need a freaking big washer on that? Let's see if I can get a nice big fat washer. Got a nice big washer guys. More secure. Might lock it into place as it keeps moving. Okay, that's better. Fuck, bloody thing, it moves again. Gonna overcompensate this time. It's 
so it's a little Near enough. So, let's take the valve up for the lift. Okay. So that's TDC gone. Eleven forty-nine. Eleven fifty-two. 1153, 1154, 11 that's full lift. Probably means that's not very accurate. Well, it's not bad at all actually. So now we're opening at 85, 86, 87. Uh, now we're too early. Ugh, oh, but looks tight. So we've reached full lift at 90, about 90 degrees, and we need 106 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo these screws and I'm going to rotate the crank to retard the cam timing. Well, that's the idea. Let's see if this does anything. So I'm going to. Rotate until we read 106. Well, that's, that's nearly 100. That's 106. So now we need to lock the can in place. If this is how it is supposed to be set, it's way away from standard Pinto cam timing, like significantly. Like that's, oh yeah, but we're not top dead centre, are we? Anyway, I think I'm setting it to what they're telling me to do it to. <coughs> so I'm going to look and see if this will rotate without touching the piston. So now we're top dead center, starting to do an intake. It's doing an intake, and the valve's closing, and about here we start getting the bang. About there. Still showing a bit open, but uh, so that's the blank, that's where the cam is now. It's, it's pointing down that way. We've retarded the cam a bit. I guess that's where it should be. Loads there. Well, 
I hope we haven't bent the valves because I think this is the right way to time the engine. Uh, so TDC, both valves, she said, need to be slightly open. Well, that is slightly open. Okay, we've done very well. We've done very well. I want to do a pressure test in the cylinders to establish if I've bent valves or not because yesterday we were rotating the engine and we hadn't the cam in the right time and we felt a few steps on the um, wrench so I think that was uh, possibly valves touching pistons. So. I'm going to put um, the cylinder, I'm going to shut both valves on cylinder number one. Now what I wanted to tell you is this, this is an old spark plug, right? Which I basically chiseled and broke the electrode both ends and just basically left this. So it looked, it's an NGK, it's one of these. All right. It's an old one, so I just broke that off, took the electrode off, and then chiseled it with a steel rod until the porcelain all falls off. So I'm going to B blast this, um, but the thing I wanted to point out is if anyone ever wants to do this, I haven't done it yet, it's not working, but one of these BSP, this is your one of the regular BSP um, quarter inch fittings for compress and pneumatic tools. Do you look at this, right? This doesn't have a thread in it. So, somehow, it's just the right size. And it's screwing in to the point where it's, it's tight. So I'm thinking if I put a bit of Teflon um, tape, or whatever it's called, plumber's tape, it might uh, create a seal. So then what I do is, I screw this, the spark plug well, whatever it looks like was a spark plug. I screw that in, connect my airline, and basically that's all I can think of. But turn the air on, and that will pressurize the cylinder. And I guess if there's a leak in the valves, I'll be able to hear it. That's my theory. So I'm going to seal this off. I'm going to sandblast it so it's all nice and clean and nothing falls in the engine. And then I'm going to bring my uh, compressor line, fit it in, and see what happens. See if it will uh, become a projectile. Anyway, I'm going to stick that in there, send the number one. You'll need a deep socket for that. All right, so that's there. Uh, both valves are closed. So let's see. Right. So I don't know what the pressure on a cylinder needs to be, but I assume it's well beyond uh, uh, 125 psi so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the main switch off of the compressor I'm going to drain the air the reason it took so long is because there's a big air hose going to the B blast Okay, so that's empty there. Well, that's 
far as I can tell that's connected and I'm going to add a bit of pressure Sound too good, but then again, I've not done it before. So, okay, hang on, because not the valves might not be shut. What a spanner! Uh, what a spanner! Let's get back to top deck center. Basically, that is top dead center, right there, cylinder number one. Just change the camera angle. Okay, let's have a listen to that. I can't even open the freaking valve. That's insane, man. Okay. That is some freaking pressure, man. Uh. And it all seems to be leaking on the exhaust, which is what was the precarious. That was the precarious. Um, that's what was hitting yesterday. I can't hear any coming from this side, which is the inlet. Yeah. I think we've got bent valves. Bloody hell. Damn thing. I'm glad the ends of the damn cab still. Put the pin in next time. Right. Uh. Hmm. Okay. No. That's better. 
Well, that was a close one, guys. Um, I've just got this uh, air pressure regulator. This is actually for a, um, a paint gun. Uh, and I'm converting the MPA, megapascals, to PSI. So I'm going to start with 50 PSI testing pressure, which I think is easily handleable, um, which is about 0.35 megapascals so let's try that see what happens all right chaps so i've connected uh, the the 150 psi going in here converted to 50 psi coming out of there so i can have a regular uh, reliable 50 a constant 50 psi going into the engine i just need another line now Right, that's PVC. That's PVC and we got loads of leaking. That's 50 psi. Oh dear me. Yeah, we bent that valve, man, proper. Man. And the valve just dropped. Great. <laughs> so soon the head's got to come off, and uh, I better do it now before I forget and that valve gets uh, shunted. Hey, chaps. So in the head, I'm just trying it with this uh, torch. So. That's the exhaust valve where my finger is. That's how much light is coming through. All right. Then number three, which was the good cylinder. You see, as soon as I put a bit of pressure in it, it seals completely. Which suggests to me that if I use the heavy valve springs, it might actually help to create a seal. Even this one, if I push hard, it does close a bit, but there's definitely a But if I, hey, okay, let's just see, see what you can understand what's going on there. It does get better when you push it. So I'm just wondering, hang on a minute, because I, I want to see if I can rotate the valve. I'll see if anything changes, but I can't get to them. Disco tech, disco, disco, disco. Oh. Okay. Anyway, can I, can I turn it a bit? Does it move? See, if I move the valve around, see that? That's got a much better seal now. Still not 100%. Not like this bad boy. That bad boy seals completely. Thing is, I put them in the drill, the hand drill, one valve at a time, and I turned them. None of them sort of seemed to be completely straight. So they're all kind of the same, but that could be that the drill's not um, quite right. Anyway, there we go. 
that's the uh, that's the test for now. See, that's the uh, it's a kit you buy. It's called a valve grinding kit, and you've got the you've got the course, which is like a sand, a sort of oily sand. And then that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the course now, and then uh, you got fine, which will be finer sand. And you've got the little suction pad stick, so you put it on the valve seat. A little bit of that oily stuff. And then you get your suction thing on the valve. Obviously, you got the spring off the valve. So I'm going to clean it up like this, get rid of all of the sand and do the same on the seat and I'm going to see if we've improved uh, the ceiling of the valve. I don't know how much you need to do to make this effective. So I'm going to do it a little bit at a time. Get a feel for it. I'll get my torch, which is here, and turn it on, plonk it in the inlet port, and it's not really made much of a difference at all. So it could be that the valve's bent, I doubt it though. Um, anyway. Onwards and upwards. Those man, those manly voices you're making. I think they're going to help you build more yeah. muscle. It's like a release, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has I'll a try psychological again. multiplication effect. Ah! Fucking brilliant, dude. Oh. We need to go to a public gym and do oh. that. I'm just burning. Keep doing it, dude. Oh. It's like a gun show. Look at this. How about if I give you two of them? Oh. Do you think I can do this? Come on. Oh no, two. Do shoulder press. Shoulder press, dude. Oh. Up over your head and up. Good. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's too much. I better not keep doing this, man. I don't want to get ripped and everything. The women will be jumping all over me. All right, chaps. Uh, I'm tired. I've just been editing video for the last all day. Really, it's very time-consuming. I can't see very well. Oh. Anyway. What happened was uh, we didn't bend any valves. The valves were perfect. Uh, as I said earlier on, it's just that the machine shop didn't finish the job and the valves weren't seated. So we took it up the road to a chap called Mark. Can't remember the name of the business. It's not Kings for Engine Service. It's probably Engine Services here in Briley Hill. And he did a, uh, he reseated the valves. We went there and before we picked it up, he showed us what it should sound like when you put pressure in it and there was like no air leaking at all um, 
So we carried on with our engine build, decided we can't skim. So it's 8 to 1 compression ratio. We put a pair of twin 45 DHLA carburetors. These are the Lotto Italian side draft carburetors. And these were prepared by a friend of mine in Northern Ireland called Roy Brown. And if some of you are up in Northern Ireland in the classic car world, you might have heard of the name Roy Brown. He's very good. He's been doing these Weber and the Lotto carburetors since before I was born. Uh, I think he said... 1974 started something like that anyway I gave him we swapped carburetors I gave him some old Ferrari carburetors that were in very bad condition and he supplied me these beauties prepared can't remember what size chokes he's put on them probably 36s or 38 size chokes don't ask me jets and a Martian juice I've just left it to Roy I fitted a very long uh, inlet manifold because the Capri the Capri, as you can see, has got a very long engine bay and it will take uh, long intake manifolds. So uh, we fitted a standard tubular exhaust manifold, a cheap one. Uh, and what else have we done? Put the Piper cam kit, got an underdriving cam, crank pulley. We've had the crankshaft lightened and dynamically balanced with its connecting rods, which are from a Ford 205 block injection. These are the better rods, still standard Ford rods, but better. Lightened and dynamically balanced, together with the crank pistons, rod bolts. Uh, we also bought an ultralight flywheel, steel flywheel, from a company called Turbosport here in the UK. Uh, ARP connecting rod bolts, ARP uh, flywheel bolts. Had the, they had the crank knife edged guys as well. It's Wilkinson's Dynamic Balancing in Hale Zoen, West Midlands. They did a very nice job. Um, we've got the Marley Pistons. We've got Marley Pistons, cast aluminium Marley Pistons. <clears throat> the cylinder head was ported. We don't know who ported it, but it was supplied to us by Chris Holland at RRS Rolling Road. Um, and we bought valves, uh, both of our valves, sorry, both inlet and exhaust valves are wasted stems. Um, exhaust valves are single collet, inlet valves are triple collet. Can't remember where we bought the inlets and where we bought the exhausts from, but it was from two different suppliers because uh, we wanted the wasted stem. They're the largest valves you can fit, 45.5 uh, I think for the inlet and 38 point something for the exhaust. So the cylinder head is gas flowed ported very nicely um, it's just not skimmed so we've got no um, compression what else have we done to this engine anyway it doesn't really matter I'm just going to show you the engine now here as it stands and I'm going to go back to the startup so unfortunately we missed a lot of the build um, but you're just going to have to imagine what we did <laughs> so there's the motor now and, oh yeah, we've also got an H and H ignition uh, distributor. And these guys are recommended for building nice mechanical advance distributors because these carburetors don't give you provision for vacuum advance. So you have to either do away with your advance, uh, your vacuum advance, or go for one of these mechanical distributors by H and H here in Briley Hill, West Midlands. They also supplied us the coil. We were running the standard fuel pump, but this is, it's a Pierberg Ford one, and it's too much fuel pressure, so we are getting a few drips of the carbs. So I'll need to uh, change that, possibly for this, which is a, you can go for all sorts of pumps, but uh, my nails bust, sorry, that's ugly. It's a, just a 12 volt uh, low pressure electric fuel pump with 8 millimeter unions for 8 millimeter fuel hoses, which is what these carburetors take 8 millimeter inside diameter. It's got a Magard period classic twin cable throttle linkage supp supplied by Roy. That's the long inlet manifold I was telling you about. You can see it's got very long runners. Supposedly, those are better for torque. 
and standard Ford alternator. That's the little under underdrive crank uh, pulley. Basically, your with this your alternator and your water pump won't spin as fast. Don't ask me if that's going to cause problems, but that's what the boys that build these and race them on a regular basis use. So that's what we've gone for. Um, and I think that's about it. Believe it or not, this engine, just in part, has cost us about four and a half thousand pounds. That's a lot of money. That's English pounds, right? And we did all the assembly and blah, blah, blah. Lots of hours went into it. Let me see if I can show you the ultralight flywheel through the bell housing hull. Does it's not showing very clear? Come on, Billy. Nope. Mm, you can't really tell. Anyway, it's a beaut. And we've also got this um, supposedly high torque starter motor by a company called. I think it's Eurolec again here in Briley Hill. Power light, I think it's called. And that's pretty much it. That's just a little pipe across a uh, block breather with a in the adapter pipe. And that is it. So that's going to go in there with a bit of luck. So yeah, there you have it. And I uh, hope you enjoy uh, the sound of the motor. Took us a while to start it, which is not ideal, because these cams, new cams, they need about 20 minutes worth of bedding in at high RPM, well, two, 3,000 RPM. And you're supposed to get the engine started immediately because the full valve spring pressure applied on the cam lobes at low revolution is a lot higher, apparently. So it was an ideal startup, guys. We might have took something <laughs> off the cam I don't know yet it seems to run pretty good um, but you know you have to try these things and you learn anyway enjoy the rest of the video thanks for watching put that there put these on because otherwise there's no point freaking wearing them is it right spark test Let's have a look and see if we get anything. Uh, all right. Something I right, dude.
a hot. Feels like the batter is flat, doesn't it? Positive to the starter motor, negative to the engine. Remember the other spark plug still not in. better yeah show me spanner dude now that is a hell of a <laughs> feel right man. Just doesn't freaking feel right. You ready? Yeah. How the f oh, shit. Oh. How the frick am I gonna get to that? Okay. Pause. Got a trick from me. All right. Yep. Oh. That's better. Isn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm checking for spark, dude. Okay. Come on. Does this need to be earthed? I have no idea. Nope. No spark. <sighs> uh, what are we doing wrong, Gav? Oh, we need power to the coil, don't we? We've got power to the coil. So negative goes there, positive goes there. Don't we need any energy to the freaking coil, Gav? <laughs> I ain't been putting anything to the coil. Gav, can you read the instructions again? This system requires a 12 volt non ballasted ignition from the vehicle wiring loom fed to the positive side ah. of the new HT coil. That's what we were missing, dude. Right, so that's the positive side. This system requires a 12 volt non ballasted ignition from yeah. the vehicle wiring loom fed to the positive side of the new HT coil. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's going to do it. Is that, that going to work? Or is that taking a piece? Uh, there you go. Try camera, dude. It's going. Hmm. One and ready. All right. Yep. So battery connect. Now I need this. Okay, so that's there. Check the spark. Ooh. What the? F you know that's got spark, then, dude, because it it just went funny. to ignite. Yeah. Yeah, it's got spark, all right. It's making a funny metal noise. Is that bell, the bell hat, the the, the, fl the the flywheel? Did you hear that? Is the flywheel touching the bell hat? 
is the flywheel touching the bell housing? Uh, it's a good question, man. Let's have a look. I don't think so, but... No, that looks all right, man. All right, let's go for it. Okay, dude, fire in the hole. What the fuck? Okay, timing's a bit somewhere. Not where we want it. Uh, so to advance, the, I might have advanced the timing too much. Um, I'll just pull that off a second. Okay. It's like, okay, let's try there. See if that makes a positive uh, thingy bobby. All right, dude. Mm -hmm. Do that again. A bit more. All right. Yep. Screwdriver, please. Okay. Dude, it's got an unusual smell to it. It does. It's quite like a. It's like a perfume, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Might be the. I don't know. Get pick the camera up, dude. Right. Half one. One. Can't half, believe it two, started. Two and a half. Yeah. Might be sucking air though, man. Because it's been popping over everywhere, innit? Maybe the dizzy needs adjusting again. Hang on. Half, one, one half, two, two and a half. Let's try this one again. It does smell like a perfume. Yeah, it's got a perfumey aroma to the exhaust, doesn't it? Half, one, one half, two, two and a half. Half, one, one half, two, two and a half. <sighs> this spring is binding. And I think it's binding prematurely. now if the engine ain't wanting to um right okay did I tighten that up Gav can you get a 13 spanner dude might have it does smell weird doesn't it I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing What size is that? 13. Okay. 14. Do the 14. Okay. 14. Oh, that's pretty tight. Mm. It's about firing a lot, isn't it? do this that's going to push that forward which is what I want to do I think it's 
something like that. Let's give that a go. See what it says. Yeah? Yeah. You can adjust the dizzy while it's running, can't you? Well, the backfiring, I don't think it's the dizzy dude, but it, I'll try it. I'll try it. Okay? Okay. Ian Moff's on, dude. I, I want to hear it, man. I want to hear <laughs> it. Right, what am I doing? I don't need that. All right? Yeah. Smells weird, that does, man. Weird. Hmm. Why is that happening, man? See, we've got the movement that we need. All right, we'll all go right with that. I don't know why it's spitting like that. Let's give it half one. Okay. Half one. Half one. Half one. Fuel pressure. We've got fuel going in. Let's have a look at the torch. Sounds the same as a 1600, doesn't it? Maybe a little, a little bit, a fraction more. It's got more of a deeper tone to it. <clears throat> right, okay, so let's give full throttle. Those are fully open. And those... are also fully open. Yeah. Actually, I think... Yeah, okay. So that. Oh fuck, I hope I didn't bend fucking spindles, man. So that's too open. It's too open. Dude, I hope I didn't fucking bend the spindles. So if it's too open, I close it like this, don't I? Yeah. That's it. Okay, so. Uh, that's better. I think that's better anyway. All right, let's try that for what it's worth. Okay. Smelling like that, man. Hey? I don't know. I did it like that, then. I think it like that. It's a bit vague, this is. I think I flooded them. Too much fuel going in. I don't know, dude. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Definitely not doing what we should have done. Fuck it. Yeah, flames everywhere. You. 
something ain't right, is it? Something ain't right. Something ain't right. Sinking away from everywhere. Oh, that could be timing or lean mixture. Now, if the timing was wrong, it means that the exhaust valves are not opening to let the... All the timing's off, yeah. It's a good point, dude. Could be that the cam timing's freaking off. That's a good idea, dude. Because it's not going the right way. It's coming back up. Yeah. Uh, so we need to check the timing. Yeah, let me just try it once again, see what this okay. does. Come on dude, stop fucking me about. Yeah. Thing is it runs, but it doesn't want to stay running. Why is it? Changed. Right, that's top dead center for number one. Let's have a look and see. If we're anywhere near. Is it definitely top dead center? Because you have to go around twice, don't you, to get top dead center? Yeah, it's definitely top dead center, dude. And that's over at number one. Okay. I don't think the battery is flat though. It doesn't seem to be doing much though, does it? Let's try the other battery just in case. Alright dude? Yep. Well I'm on my maths. What we've done, what you've done there, huh? Whatever you've done there to advance it all that far, yeah, is has got it to the point where it's not firing now. Yeah. So we need to go back to where it was before, where it was firing.
was you not know, looking for it. Sounded better now, didn't it? Yeah. No spark now then, dude. Huh? I don't think there's a spark. Oh, I'd say I agree. Why won't that be? Why won't that be a f***ing spark, man? Hmm? It's got to be something to do with power to the coil, hasn't it? Which is this little thing here. That's a bit barbaric. All right. Yep. going on with this? What the hell, dude? Whip another spark up, man, and see if well, we're not getting no fucking spark now. It's turning over better, though, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, there is spark. fuel or something. The fuel pump is off. Is that a new one? Oh, for goodness sake. F***ing work, man. The f***ing radiator's leaking, dude. Can you tighten the two Jubilees? Got no fuel, dude. Why the f*** have we got no f***ing fuel? Oh, is what? It might not be in the fuel tank. There we go. Make sure it's in the tank. Cause was it not in the tank? Yeah, because the fuel's here, and I think the pipe was like. Oh. All right. Yep.
Still no fuel. You adjusted something. Oh, on we the got fuel now, you? dude. Sorry? Huh? You adjusted something on the carbs before, didn't you? Have you tightened something up? No, we got fuel again. Oh, we have? Yeah. Oh. That's sounding different. That now, sounds too. like timing now. Start to smell like an engine now.
Hey chaps. Gav and I stayed up until about 1.30 in the morning uh, getting this engine ready to fire up and we did. It was a good day. Hard work like but uh, <coughs> um, I'll give it a, a fire up. It's already run so it is a bit warm. Um, it's got 45 mil Delorters on it, tuned by Roy Brown in Northern Ireland, and it's got a few other bits and pieces, including a a BP 300 Piper cam, which is a rally cam, and you can hear it. It sounds rough at idle, but it revs very nicely. Have a listen. Might not start actually because the ignition is advanced a lot. Bad, is it? See you later. 